Mabuhay, kapatids. My name is Stephanie. And my name is Aimee. And welcome to the Babaylan Bruja Book Club podcast. We have come together in efforts to decolonize our minds, our bodies, and reconnect with spirit by ways of relation via conversation of education, interpretation, and integration. So this is our invitation for you to join us on our journey as we discuss works from honored artists, authors, and thought leaders from the Philippinex diaspora. Quick disclaimer, we want to acknowledge that everyone is consciously where they need to be. And we are not experts, but we are sharing our own unique lived experiences. Hmm. So before we dive in, we'd like to take a moment to ground and open up this safe container. <sighs> Taking some deep breaths in through your belly, out through your mouth. <sighs> take two more in through your belly. Let's do one more. We want to thank all the forces that have played a role in helping us gather here today. All the elements, the directions, God, source, high power, the plant ancestors, all the ancestors, all the forces. Thank you for allowing us to gather here in this safe space. We pray that you guide us today with this conversation. And we also wanna acknowledge and thank the ancestors on the lands we reside. I am on the Bay Miwok Yokuts tribe land. And I mean, I am on the ancestral meeting lands of the Shawnee, Miami, Wyandotte, and Delaware nations in Ohio. We want to thank all these forces again for helping us to be in this space and you too, wherever you're tuning in, no matter whenever and whenever that may be. Yes. Sheen, I'm, I'm going to. One of these days, I'm gonna actually pull, pull up a, a scene thing. <laughs> Get one. <laughs> do it. Cut. Please do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be hilarious. Hi. Okay. Well, hi, sis. Well, hi. Hello. Welcome back. And I love to see your face. Yeah. Do you like my shirt? Yes. It is such a great segue for today's conversation. Yes. This is Urduha, because uh, we're so we're going over chapter five, and it's called the Babylon Urduha, Imperial Memories, and the Filipina Diaspora. And I was excited about this one because I have her shirt. I'm in her fan club. <laughs> uh, she passed it down to you in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I was. I was. Sure got to you. Yeah, I was very excited to do this, um, to read this chapter. So um, I can go ahead and do a summary if you'd like. Sure. So Princess Erduha, um, she was she was an actual thing. Like there was an Erduha, um, the Muslim explorer Ibn Battuta. Um, he he went around Southeast Asia in like thirteen twenty five. Um, and he had an account of Princess Erduha uh, from the island of Tawalisi. It was an egalitarian kingdom where the quote unquote women ride horses, understand archery, and fight just like men. <laughs> <laughs> and so Princess Tell Erduha, him. oh yeah, <laughs> Tell him, sis. Princess Erduha uh, was skilled in archery and hand to hand combat. So here's Here's a little tidbit. The scholars insist that Erduha was a mere legend. I've actually had like people tell me this, old white men specifically, where I would bring up, like I would be wearing the shirt and be so excited when they asked me about it. And they'll be like, well, you know, 
um, they don't really know if she might not have been real. And I'm like, okay, well, first of all, that's not the point. Second of all, mm. just because there is a woman who rides horses, understands archery and fights just like a man, you feel like she is fake. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you feel like that she's fake, then you should ask yourself, why do I feel like a woman like this could never exist in the world? Do you know what I'm saying? You better hold that mirror for him. <laughs> hold that mirror for that white man. <laughs> I wish I had said that. I, I did not. But so anyway, but in Pangasinan in the Philippines, they actually do have historically an Urduha who is very much similar to um, the Muslim explorer Batuta's account of her. So it it's very, she existed. She is an actual historical person that you can, that you can go into oral history and written history in Pangasinan. Um, and it goes a little bit into the chapter about how they know that. Um, so she was real. And, and um, so this chapter, what it does is it kind of sets up Urduha as a Babylon, even though she was, she technically was not. So they, uh, go into the similarities and the differences uh, between Arduha and Babylon. Um, but they really uphold Arduha as a representation and symbol of modern Filipina feminism and a potential healer of fractured diasporic community. So basically like how she did for me, like when I found out about her, it was like very, it was actually very like healing. Cause you know, when you see yourself represented and you can kind of like it's like an archetype where you can go oh i want to be like that right yeah so archetype. yes mm -hmm. so um that is a little bit about the summary and as always we will go into a couple vocab words and then a couple quotes so um is there anything else you'd like to add sis no i think that was a great summation of the chapter um from how i my mind read it i guess from a more like outline what do they what do you always say to me um what's the uh cliff notes version yeah um it just talks about how batuta found her did she really exist it's about a lot of debate and then they talk about like how her presence in general kind of brings up the conversation period and then the babylon how it ties to babylon um talks a lot about sexuality um, and then art, some artists and their the activism that they do to raise those conversations. Um, Filipino Barbies, can't wait to dive into their sister. <laughs> um, and then I think it was like a closing of like, I don't know, like a woman in development conference, like people, you know, the Pangasinan women who attended like their, their interpretation or view of her the Urduha, Princess Urduha, so, so yeah, that's the Cliff Notes, Stephanie, summary, um, it actually that. leads to my vocab word. Okay, um, let's do it. Yeah, you were talking about um, archetypes, and I want to bring forth the understanding um, of archetypes and like how they allow us to I think the shadow side of archetype, and this is going linguistics, is stereotype. Mm. But, um, I never thought of that, actually. That's yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that came through. Um, but it's Come through. Come through. We asked, we called them in, right? Um, but it's like the energy, uh, like to understand someone, like the Myers-Briggs and the mm -hmm. Enneagram One, the human mm -hmm. design and mm -hmm. astrology. Mm -hmm. I was having a conversation yesterday about one of my friends is actually a doctor, ha. Huh? He knew, he knew his moon and rising. And I love you, Ading Randall, if you listen. Um, but our spiritual beliefs are different as of now that I understand. Um, but I just wouldn't assume that he would be into astrology because, you know, a lot of religious folk are like, that's demon work, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to you, Randall, for being, and he's Aquarius moon, sis. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> Isn't that your moon? No, I'm Scorpio. Oh, okay, okay. I'm rising. Scorpio. Yeah, I'm Aquarius rising. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, either way, I was saying it's like the Cosmos version of like a Myers Briggs. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring that kind of understanding into my word, which is metonym. Can you? Yeah. Can you tell us what page you is on? Uh, I, you know what I have in. So originally what I noticed appeared on 169. Okay. And then it appears again at the summary at the end on page 179. Huh. Okay. Um, but he metonym um, as definition, which I can look up really quick. <laughs> I had it on my phone. Actually, I marked it on my phone, but we on the computer, so whatever. Um, it's the substitution of the name of an attribute or adjunct for that of the thing meant. For example, um, a track for like a horse race, right? Mm-hmm. So we're, when they talk about this chapter, Babylon and Urduha, mm-hmm. kind of acknowledges there was a princess Urduha, but then Ur, the I feel like the the soul or like the energy or the archetype, yes of her um this word just caught my eye because i was like meta you know met i like meta words anyway and um i felt like it was a great way to help guide folks to understand especially those who depending on the spectrum and i as i from what i'm like kind of coming in folks are like you can't call her a babylon because she wasn't she didn't do this right or right. the more conservative versus the more liberal right right oh, that right fight whatever right so i think this word is very neutralizing Mm. and that helps you understand um you know it's a metonymic i don't know if that's a word but way to understand who princess or duha was Mm. really stood for Mm. um, and it was like you know if we're talking like more casual (laughs) It's like Disney saying, oh, here's a Filipino princess, you know, here's a princess story. We're getting there. They covered Vietnam. So I'm all, I'm like, go south. Yeah. You talking about Raya? Are you talking about Raya? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that she, that right. Yes. But Raya definitely was, she had some holly sticks and that, that definitely was uh, Filipino martial arts. So I'm a claimer. But she's not officially from the Philippines. So well, they're like, not officially from. Yeah, technically, they're not officially from. Yeah. Anywhere, because it's yeah. Disney, right? But anyway, anyway, moving on. Meta nit meta nimic meta nim meta nim like antonym synonym. Okay, a meta nim. Meta metonym is metonym. a way to help understand. I um, Arduha and Babylon. Okay. And her energy, like the energy she brought. She was like, yeah, yeah. She, I, she was like a woman who was strong and fought. And mm-hmm. they, furthermore, I, I was like, why are they keep calling her an Amazonian warrior princess? Yeah. Like, like Xenon, the warrior princess. And I was know? like, Amazon, that's like the a whole other different <laughs> continent. What is yeah. that? But, but maybe that's, that a, a, that's a meta, uh, a metonym to metonym to understand Urduha. Yes, yes, it's like a bridge word. Oh, I love that. So the next time some old white gentleman tells me Urduha is fake, I'm gonna be like, well, you know, historically there are links to an actual Urduha, but who I'm ascribing to is a metonym. You to- better tell him. <laughs> Come through with your educated answer. He'd be like, what? It's a metonym this to understand. Girl knows- Vernacular yeah. spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> it's a metonym to understand my ancestral strength. So you better step off. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. No, please own it. Own it, girl. Okay. Sacred rage is real. And it's okay. It's okay. This is a safe space, like we said. <laughs> so okay. anyways. Anyway, I love that. And I also wanted to, you know, later on, maybe when we get into the sexuality and body stuff, where is my phone? I left it over there. But it, um, Amazonian woman, I Googled it. And let me tell you, like, you have a Greek version and the woman is covered up, but her titties out, or her boobies out. And then, then you have like a Wonder Woman, like, you know, the movies. Yeah. It's like their boobs are covered up, but their stomachs are showing. And I was just like, this 
patriarchy. I was like, Google's patriarchal. <laughs> Listen, all of the all of the fem- women superheroes, they're all created by men, right? I-, I bring this up to my husband all the time, like when we watch like cartoons or not cartoons, but like superhero stuff or you know like anime or whatever. I'm like, look at that. Like in real life. She cannot have this part cu- uncovered and her tummy uncovered because she would die. Like the like yeah, why you Mulan's gonna hair, die? Why Mulan's hair gotta be out in battle? You know that bitch right? tied that shit up because that's number one rule when you go into a fight. Put the hair up, <laughs> right? And like, why are you gonna have your midriff showing? Like that is the most vulnerable spot. And then the show your cleavage, like your heart is like literally right here. Yeah. Like, this is so unrealistic. I bet you Princess Arduha, rest her, her spirit, she probably told her dudes, like, look, if if I got to show my tummy, you guys got to fight with no shirts on. Right? How about you go into battle without a loincloth on? How about that? <laughs> All vulnerable. <laughs> They're like, okay, you can wear whatever you want. It's fine. <laughs> They're like, sorry, princess. Eh. Sorry, huh? Sorry, huh? <laughs> okay. okay. So... That was my word. Thank you for sharing any, that. That was thought, any other thoughts on that or no, I love that. I love that's the, that this that's the first one that you brought up because um that that is kind of like the whole essence of the chapter, right? Like who is Erduha? Is she Babylon? And then kind of comparing the two and comparing and contrasting and and really wrestling with who Arduha is, if she was real, but then at the end of the day, realizing it's a metonym, right? To realizing it's something just to describe uh, like an archetype that you can, uh, that you can uh, bring into your own life. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Good summary, girl, with your red lips. Do you think they wore I- lipstick when they went to war the battle? I don't know, but I would. <laughs> I wouldn't have my midriff out. <laughs> but I might have some lipstick. Who knows? You know. Listen, I think there's like memes like women lipstick and mascara. That is our modern day warrior. It, war paint. Yes. Right? Like when you, right. When you need to feel confident. My mine is eyeliner. I I mm. hardly ever leave the house without eyeliner. It's mine is eyelashes and uh lipstick. Mm. Oh, I also I love I eyebrows. Huh? I said I also love eyebrows. But you know what? Foundation, you don't need all that. Look at your skin. Look at your oh, brown for, skin. Oh, honey, it's far away. But, you know, if I go up, like, they don't want to see my pores. I'll save, I'll save y'all the <laughs> terror. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. Look at you. The chin. The chin. Thank you, sis. I received that. But this, the chin acne from this mask stuff is mm. crazy yo Askney. yeah that's like you gotta one. run home and just wash your pores right away i know <sighs> so okay. off topic first back on problems topic. but that's still problems okay yes so my vocab word is from the section about johanna potigs potigs or duha barbies so we can go into that if you'd like to, after I bring up my, my mm-hmm. vocab word, my vocab word is just, it's not necessarily like a huge thing, but it can be a vehicle into which we can talk about these, these Barbies right quick. So Joanna Potig is a, an artist. Um, and she participated in a particular art, art exhibit. And her art exhibit was called Sinoka. Sino Ako, mm. which means who are you? Mm-hmm. Sino ka and Sino Ako is who am I? So um, our art was obviously going it, about identity, but I don't know. I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was chuckling when I read Sino ka because I heard, you know, you know that Tita or that lo- Sino ka. <laughs> You know, like, fun. like, who's, that. yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> like, who's that? Who's your, who's your companion? Sino, Sino, Sino Sino over there. Yeah, yeah Sino that. Jen. Is that the boyfriend? No. Who's that your girlfriend. boyfriend, your girlfriend? Who is that over there? So anyway, Sino. 
<laughs> so, but anyway, that's like a true vocab word. So, sino, sino ka? Who are you? Sino ako? Sino ako? Sino ako? Who am I? Um, and those are actually great questions to ask in general. And now you know how to ask them in mm. Tagalog. So, yes. Yay. Yay. Um, who, who are you, though, sis? Oh. I know. That's not fair, huh? Sino, sino, okay. Sino, sino ka? Sino ako? I, I am a, I'm a mother a partner, a sister, a creatrix, mm. an energetic being. Mm, tell them. Yes. My birthright is abundance mm. and deep joy, an ancestral remembrance of strength. Come on. Come on. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's who I am. Sino, sino ka? Girl. Oh man, I am Stephanie Lourdes Casinta Hun Arcana, daughter of Raymond and Maria Arcana, granddaughter of. <laughs> Should I say I'm like dang? Say it, say Lola, it. Lola, Lola, Eusebio, and Valeriana Casinta Hun. Yes. And Magdalena and um, Venice Arcana, grandpa. Man, and I am. I am a, I'm a lover of life mm -hmm. and all things. I am loving awareness. Um, and uh, I am a child of the divine. Mm. I'm here to disrupt your world. Mm. I'm here to <laughs> fuck shit up. Make you think. <laughs> that was good. Nice. That was off the dome, sis. I know. Nice. Oh, shit. Hot, hot take. Oh, some energy. So yeah, so for those of you out there, this is a great question. Pause the video. Ask yourself, who am I? Say yeah. it out loud. Say it out into the world. And it doesn't matter if you're in your car or with your kids or whatever. Just figure out who you want to be in this moment. It can change from every moment too, you know what I mean? But like, who are you in this moment? Grandpa Philip. Can't believe I forgot his name. I'm yeah. owning it. Grandpa Philip's over there, like, what about me? So he died when I was in, in um, diapers, but I know you hear uh, Papa. I know you hear Papa. Mm -hmm. so. That was good. Okay, so I feel complete if you do with those vocab words. Would you like to speak about her Urduha Barbies right quick? Girl, okay. So everybody direct <laughs> to page um, 173 and 174. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm imagining Joanna's voice because she's put it. Okay, let me tell y'all a quick little hot yeah. take. Yeah. Yes. This <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me, because it's too hot. I got to drink some water. Mm. So I had to like finish this chapter this morning. <laughs> and um, when I read this piece, I was like, wait a minute. Joanna's a white girl and she was in the Filipino like, like art show. Like what? I sat straight up. I got my jolt of like, yeah. yeah. And um, what'd you think about all that? That I, I feel like that's, it was like something like, it's kind of like, you know, what you mean? Like, so, and then you hear her story. She, her parents were, they said conscious missionaries or something, right? Yeah. Socially conscious American missionaries. And I, I sat with that a little bit because some sacred rage came up. It's just like white savior martyrdom. You know what I'm saying? But also, think, and it's that paradoxical thinking, you know, there are white people who could have lived a very probably lush life in America. And they're like, you know, we're going to go to the Philippines, mm -hmm. we're show our daughter, you know, how fortunate she is um, to have the, let's not even say that, but, you know, to have that white, white privilege. So for her to come back and be like, yo, like, <clears throat> I'm basically an inside out coconut yeah, well, I put that in my comment, she uh, so <laughs> respect to you, Joanna, but, um, you know, her art, I mean, that for her to put her art out, first of all, is very courageous. Mm -hmm. Um, the Barbies again, like girl, we, body image topic. I know we're going to dive into like in depth one day. Um, yeah. More, in our yeah. in our next, um, study break. 
Um, but just like, I'm like, where's the thick fucking Barbies at, bro? Because they're all fucking skinny. <laughs> Body diversity. Did she use actual Barbies? No, Did she she sculpted she, them. Did she, she, she has sculpted them. So the, um, uh, the one on page 173, she's Devin looks like an Amazonian warrior princess, but interesting that her face is white. She actually said it's not white because of white people, but it's because of uh, the, what did she say? It's on page 172. She attested mm. something else, but then the writer was like, nah. So, but I mean, art is how you interpret it, right? Oh, it's uh, although Podig describes in a telephone interview <clears throat> that the figure's face the color of seashells is the light hitting yeah. her face. The white face and dark body suggests a dualism and melancholia that complicates any simplistic reading. <clears throat> Absolutely fucking Lily. So I think that that's yeah. where maybe Joanna was like, okay, I live in the Philippines, but still don't, wasn't born to a bright, a brown lens, you know? And so I don't even, if people watch this, y'all just get the picture but this is the barbie where i'm talking about mm -hmm. the white face and the like brown body she's still skinny she got like probably like six pack abs <laughs> and here is the other barbie it's on the next page i wish these were in color but i understand for printing um so this one they talked about that barbie more and like her her stance, how she was very mm -hmm. closed off and so mm -hmm. careful, but she was also touching, showing her like her V, her vagina area. Um, so that was kind of alluding to my, I like how this is flowing to the quotes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy, sis. I uh, used my go with the flow spray earlier. So. Oh, well, it, energetically, it is working. See? Work. Some bruja shit. Um. But Wait, yeah, can I can I may I before Please, you jump into yes. your quote real quick? Yes. So she says that as a youth, she strongly identified with her Filipino friends who criticized the United States as an imperialist colonialist power, and she attended anti-American demonstrations. Does that make you? Does that hit? Does that make you feel different about her or not? Or I don't know. Let's just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, would you be, would you be her friend? Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm sure you're a great person. Oh, what if she's, re what if she watches that? She's like, <laughs> why are they attacking me? No. Um, but you again, know what I'm she's saying? She's a metonym. She's a metonym of like mm -hmm. other white folks who probably went to third world countries mm -hmm. and, you know, because of their parents or because they wanted to, you know, seek beyond their their privilege right and humble themselves i guess um yeah and it's just very interesting to me like why would she like she obviously strongly identified as she said herself but so much to the fact of she identified so much that she did her art on urduha yeah i don't know maybe I'm, she's talking about the fractals hmm you yeah. know, like, so like Urduha was like this, right? And it mm -hmm. off into different fragments, right? And so this yeah. is her interpretation of what Urduha looked mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, she's human. She ain't going to be able to channel all the. Yeah. And maybe, but... yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and uh, maybe if she were here now, she would just be like, she would like all of the things we're saying in quote unquote criticism she'd probably be like yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't know maybe she yeah, would yeah because i, I mean if, if you're born to be a white ally you gotta listen to folks of mm -hmm. the at the same time she lived in the philippines which we have not so we have that american privilege mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and i'm sure like Taking a thabo bath and pooping into a floor, a little, would, probably would have humbled sis a little bit, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And <laughs> those toilet situations are, yeah. That's why I'm like, you know what? I acknowledge growing up American. Like, I like my, I like having plumbing where it works and you don't have to 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Religious things I think we take for granted because we we're born into it. So yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the meaning of privilege, right? But yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to ask that. That was all my. No, I mean, did you, do you feel like you expressed all you thought about it? Yeah, I just, um, yeah, I guess. So when I read that, like she strongly identified with her Filipino friends who criticized the United States. Um, So she was, even though she was an American, she was in sitting in critique of the United States and the way they were doing their policies, et cetera. And I don't know. I just get, I get, I want to be like, yeah, that's awesome. I don't know. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to feel, but I guess I don't need to know. And I don't need to feel anything, honestly, but, Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't necessarily judge her about anything because I haven't met her. So yeah. Okay. I'm there. Now I feel complete. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think God spoke through you. At the end of the day, she's a human being. Yeah. The point, the point is she made the, she made this book, you know, we're talking about it. Yeah. And so again, trusting, um, Tita Lenny, Ati Lenny. And you know, Beyonce says, what she says? great Beyonce. She says, you know, you that bitch when you cause all that conversation. Okay. <laughs> so here we are conversating. Is that a word? It is a word now. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for indulging me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so to to flow into to your flow. well to flow and kind of go back flow. Um, you know the Barbies were a representation or showing of like women, mm-hmm. and so the patriarchy. They say in excess. I think on one page, I was like, yeah, this is what we live in a society where there's excess patriarchy because feminism girl okay when I was reading it I was like thinking about how you know we one cannot exist without the other Mm -hmm. that's why feminism was created because there's excess patriarchy that's why black lives matter was created because there's excess black and brown bodies dying um you know and so I bring that up to say that um with these pictures the way that they're kind of showing the like you know the fem like her hands are like on close to her showing it's what did he write or they wrote like her hands are like suggesting her showing her v to her vagina and I'll show the picture while you yeah about it. yep so her hands are kind of like on and the other barbie her hands are like out, but she's like exposed. And so, you know, it's the conversation around hypersexualizing women and how religions have like suppressed the divine feminine. And so, um, you know, fem- that's why feminism exists. And I've, I've literally heard men just be like, that's why y'all feminists, like blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I want to bring that metonym energy point out to like, okay, why do you think Black Lives Matter? And I feel like that's sort of the conversation or like Joanna probably brought to when she sat at white, white spaces. Right. And people are just like, Oh, yeah. all lives matter. You know, right. It's like, right. yes, all lives matter, but bl- black lives matter was we created because all lives actually don't matter. Right. Supposedly. Right. Because right. of, um, but I say that all to say sexuality with women and body image. Um, it was page 179, and it was actually um, quoting Mary John Mananzan, which we talked about a few chapters ago. And she's suggesting that girl babies were as welcome as boy babies, and virginity was not valued. So, in pre colonial time. In pre colonial time, when supposedly Princess Orduha was reigning and women were going to battle with men and we were equals that's the word to egal egalitarian yes Mm -hmm. wonder why it's such a big fucking problem like nowadays for us to exist in that like you know and it just further points out that i want to believe most of humans want us to be equal but i do believe there's some people out there that don't they really don't and those are the ones 
that we should be talking to and fighting mm-hmm. with not mm-hmm. each other you know because I don't know if that makes sense say yes but yeah. I bring that all up because of you know it's like this this always this battle of duality like you know left versus right wing patriarchy versus matriarchy feminine yeah. versus masculine you know yeah. um can't we just live <laughs> yeah <laughs> or, or yeah and like be in flow right be in flow that's why it's like women are sexual beings shit we're portals like we're ensuring that the world can procreate and posterity can flourish that you're welcome (laughs) right right you brought it too into this society and it's like but we're gonna pay you 15 percent less yeah and we're not gonna give you um sufficient maternity leave no we're we're gonna make you cover up yet in movies when y'alls are battling you gotta have your tummies out and your hair down and it's curled yeah what's with the curl hair I was like, I'm, I was like, I mean, Mulan look cute, but dang, like, why is her hair? <laughs> Ain't no regular ass female no. going into battle with their hair down. No. Um, or curled. No. They they're technology back then. No, and they're not going to be like, you know what? I'm about to die and fight for this cause and protect my people. Let me curl my hair real quick. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know. Maybe they would, but they don't. All that to say they're also like if you think about it historically they're on a battlefield they're not gonna they're probably not taking regular showers like they're surviving out there right so anyway i digress i digress Mm -hmm. yeah so um i don't know it's it's really interesting just um for me again as an energy medicine like the way I look at things from Mm -hmm. my lens Mm -hmm. like just wondering why we can't operate in a place of balance and I think that that's where we're heading in this age of Aquarius which is so right now yeah but you know just people recognizing like okay it's been such a battle of like dark and evil or dark and light for so long like can we just get along for a little bit I can have a air of peace can we just sit down I and like just chill eat some pizza or something i don't yeah, know but i know there's so much to be reconciled right especially in lieu of like this week with the yeah. trial and another killing and and oh. you know it's just those are the things though to distract us um and to keep siphoning our energy yeah that's why that's the game just protect yourself and recognize like you know these these things have to be kind of called out right whether it be like, hell no, or like, okay, wait, but let, let's talk about this, you know? Yeah, I think there's a there's definitely a conversation to be had, like, with other people, but then also with your, like, to sit and ask yourself, where am I, where am I letting the patriarchy in internalized internalized patriarchy like internalized racism internalized mis- misogyny like you know where where do i still view myself through the patriarchal lens where do i still view myself through the colo- the colonist lens you know so mm-hmm. i think it's not just an outside thing it's it probably needs to start like inside and that's that's probably why we we're still getting there or haven't um that's why it's such a, a, a not a struggle. It's it's a it, yeah, it is, it's a struggle. It's a, struggle. It's a difficult because it's, we're asking patriarchy to look at the patriarchy. Do you know what I'm saying? While they're being the patriarchy, so it's it's difficult. And then as women, you know, there are still ways that we probably look at ourselves. I used to more so than I do now through the the lens of patriarchy, right? And yeah. so it's just, it's, it's very internal and not just external. So, um, it's the male gaze, it's like losing the male. And that's why like, I love the story of princess or do because she was like, I'm going to marry a man who's stronger and can protect me. Yeah. At the end of the day, like what you going to bring? Like, cause I already got it all. Right. So that's why 
I like her you know? No, for real. He's like, I got a village. I got people who love me. Like, if I don't have to be marry a man and procreate, that's fine. But I think that that was her purpose, right? Mm -hmm. To come down and, and exhibit like that. That being can exist. You don't have to be a woman yeah. who has to have a protector and married and have children. You can also do this too. And that's not to yeah. say that that people don't have it all. But you know, you know, right. What I'm Right, right. And I think too, like, that is why in this patriarchal 2021 lens, it's hard for s scholars and like people to be like, yeah, she was totally a real person. That's she, that's not out of the realm of possibility that she exists in the way that the legend quote unquote says she does this she could I mean, why wouldn't she have existed like that? Why, you know, but I think it, because of the patriarchal lens, that's why people, that's why men, scholars, men, manly scholars are, say that she's not mm -hmm. real because it's hard for them to admit that there well, is a woman like that. Then the jig is up because it's, it's been apparent through the years, like, you just the trend is is real like the trend is real like um one of the one of the pages when they talked they said she's gabrielle salang salang yeah and she's ilocano filipino uh military leader mm -hmm. who led against the revolution against the spaniards yes which was captured. so she's like the same metonym yeah. as I her i got goosebumps yeah and now we got a we got a female vp mm -hmm. and you know so it's like the jig is up bro like you know yeah. we're capable of all of it yeah chill um i did just want to real quick talk about the similarities and differences um of our duha and the babaylan all right let's do it. are you are you com um we can flow back to what you're talking about let's after that back. okay let's so Oh, flow. I don't know. We go. We gonna flow. Um, <laughs> so Erduha and the Babylon. This is from chap uh, page one sixty four. So the similar similarities. They both represent sexual freedom. The differences um, is in the approach to marriage. Erduha resisted marriage. Right, like you said, she was like, I need a man who can defeat me in battle. Or what is the point? Uh, while the Babylon woman was typically married. That's interesting to me. Similarities, they were uh, Babylon and Urduha are respected leaders in their communities. The um, but the differences are class differences. Babylon priestess versus nobility or chieftain class for Urduha. Similarities, they both represent female agency and autonomy. Uh, the differences is mystic power from the Babylon versus military power. And then the similarities, they're both connected to community of women, Erduha and her women soldier, Babylon mm -hmm. and her spiritual community of women who passed on secret knowledge. Um, and then the differences would be in religion where uh, animism would be the Babylon and um, Muslim would be Erduha. Um, the Muslim explorer said that she knew the Quran, like back and forth or something. Yes, because yeah, yeah. I wonder so. if he. I wonder if he tried it. <laughs> <laughs> so like, ooh, ooh, what's your name, girl? <laughs> like, hey, she's like, you got to, you got to fight me in battle. He's like, yeah, I'm a I'm a explorer. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's actually a Berber Moroccan um, explorer and Berber Berb Berbian. Mm -hmm. um, one of my teachers actually taught that that was a matrilineal society and women were actually the leaders and they were like, they wore belly, you know, the belly dancer. Yeah. They wore, it was like nothing, you know, like now if we walked out like that, it'd be like, it has to be Halloween or like, you know, <laughs> you're performing or like, you know, some bullshit, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and that society, I share this with you, sis, they get to choose their husbands, like different husbands, like once a year. Yeah. <laughs> they have festivals on the Met, you gotta impress them. Huh? So, um, 
anyways, I mean, I'll say just to kind of add what you were saying, the mm-hmm. differences, um, they kind of talk about on page 160 that Erduha is like imperial trauma in terms of like physical, mm-hmm. because it's very warrior like. And I feel mm-hmm. like our bylon brings in the, you know, the, the route, the astral realm, the, mm-hmm. the multi dimensional pieces, the mystic, so, the mystic. So it was very physical, spiritual. Um, and psychological and generational repercussions on the colonized. So that conversation is what the Erduha brings in. And the Babylon, I think, brings in, you said the mystic. So. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, okay, then you, did you go over your quote? I did not. Okay. Let's let's flow. Let's flow there. Let's flow. Page one sixty six, and uh, this is from Alma Arduha Quinto, and she is an activist, artist, and art educator who uses art as a medium to advocate social issue causes. So mm-hmm. she just go. She just went ahead and said, "Let me go ahead and take Arduha's middle name." She just said let me have that which i think is really cool okay so given the name or do you think she claimed the name uh well it says that her appropriation of the name urduha reveals a kind of born again commitment to urduha's legacy so uh, i'm okay. i'm assuming she took it on for herself okay okay yeah so she she writes i see myself as a contemporary babylon just like all other women who recognize their power to transform and exercise this power to create a peaceful and nurturing environment. And um, in the beginning of the chapter on page uh, 159, it's saying how, why Filipinos love to claim or do ha, because it evokes a past blotted out by Spanish conquistadors, a history of a civilized egalitarian society predating Spanish conquest. So um, Alma Arduha is is saying that she sees herself as a contemporary Babylon. Um, Hmm. And she uses Arduha to show that you know, the the Babylon personified. And of course that goes into a whole other conversation about if she really is Babylon, you know, like all, all the things that we had just kind of touched on. Um, so sco- like scholarly and actually was she a Babylon and, and things like that. But I think what she is saying is um, the ener- metonym, like the energy, the archetype of it, right? <clears throat> she sees herself as a contemporary Babylon. Okay. So um, I, I want to ask this question of you and of our audience because i'd say like a lot of our audience the they're probably listening because babylon the word babylon strikes a chord and strikes a um and i almost like an identity do you know what i'm saying like oh that's interesting and i want to know more more know more about that like if you hear about like oh the queen archetype or the priestess we're like oh okay what is that right Mm -hmm. so i guess do you you don't have to have a quick answer do you see yourself as a contemporary babylon um and or not or like i feel like it's bold of her to say she sees herself as a contemporary babylon but maybe it's not as bold as I as I think it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we think of the Babylon as an archetype versus a lineage, maybe. Yeah. How, how, what are your well, thoughts? Well, that's the thing about um, Babylon in general. I think there was a quote was like, Babylon. While our duha eschewed marriage, which doesn't, you know, in court she refused it. Mm-hmm. The Babylon was married. Babylon's valued the institution of marriage in that their spiritual knowledge and practice was only passed on to married women who showed promise as healers. That's on page one sixty five, mm-hmm. and that's from Brewer. Um, but and there was another quote somewhere in the chapter was like, 
knowledge is actually passed down regardless if they're married or not. It's just if they showed interest or if they were um, right already expressing themselves with the bylaw. And um, I think in a way, what comes through for me is that um, Filipinx folks who are awakening, yeah, right? remembering who they are. Yes. But Bailan is like, it's an undeniable part of recognizing who you are and where you come from. And if so, if Babylon ancestry was in your family, because um, Babylon it brings in that, that mystic piece, right? And a lot of us have family members who, like, I was trying to um, trace the ating ating. We have one in my fam, but. I guess oh, like, word for real? Yeah, it's in the Philippines somewhere. Mm. My, my, um, my Lolo denied it and I wish I could ask him why but yeah I am I I mean so the way we have also unting unting in our family um but the way that I was taught to view it was through the lens of evangelical christian so and it was like that is evil we don't need an amulet we don't need like you know we don't need that energy all we need is jesus so perhaps i'm not saying that's why he denied it but maybe that's why he was reluctant to take it if he was looking at it through maybe a religious or like a even a catholic lens you know yeah yeah and so and i think it's probably been tied due to cold being colonized uh it's really yeah i don't know (laughs) it's probably like it's been uh made to think that it's evil right so i just got an unthing unthing made for me oh word word did you see it here um so there's this um filipinex uh they live on salish Salish territory in Cal- in Canada. They make unting unthings. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Their name is La Lahon dot flow on Instagram. Shout out. Oh, I should have. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. I should have worn mine. It's back behind there. I'll wear it next time. Okay. But I I posted about it, and I was I'm I'm not trying to speak out that energy, but I was just like, hmm, I'm wondering anyone's gonna be i know if my mom found out like she'd be like that is evil it's you don't need that all you need is jesus and the bible and it's like superstitious it's inviting evil spirits it's you know what i mean like that sort of energy and i'm like mom it's the it's the energy that i give it and the energy that i give it is good you know and the person who made it it, they're good and their energy is good and they put that energy in there and it's it is what it it is what it is you know and honestly like sh- they were doing a giveaway mm-hmm. and i think i saw that yeah. yeah i want it i want the giveaway and i literally oh, you did yeah that was you okay that was me and that's why I got the unthing unthing and I was like oh my gosh oh, nice. this okay. literally a gift from the ancestors so but anyway that's I just wanted to throw that out maybe that would give you a little context and maybe why he like there were a lot of unthing unthings that 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 actually are evil you know there are some that probably hold negative energy so I mean I think like crystals and crosses and yeah crosses. You know, it, it is it is what you believe it to be that's ultimately like what i think from an energy stance why mm-hmm. these these amulets these these like dense things we tangibly can touch and feel and 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 you know um like my like my grandma's necklace this mm-hmm. is buddha you know yeah. and it's more special to me because i'm like oh wow you know she, what made her buy Buddha? It's Jade. I was like, good luck. Um, but there's there's a feeling to it because I feel connected to her and you know my my grandma. You know, so yeah. Um, and it could be I could put like unhappy memories or happy memories. Into yeah, it. And, and I know. Yeah, 
when I wear it, I'm honoring like her happy memories. So exactly. Um, I feel like that's like the ant the metonym. <laughs> Right. It's, it's what it, things are what you believe it to be. Yeah. And what energy you put it in there, put in there intentionally. Like I do know there have been stories that my mom has told me about, um, amulets, anting, anting, that's used for, to curse people. Yeah. Well, they put a spell on it, like a curse on it and they yeah. chuck it into somebody's backpack. <laughs> That's so I know that that's probably what's in there too, but it's like, it's energy. Don't be nervous of energy. Like it's and, girl. Can, can I? Yeah, can please. I yeah. I feel complete. He's so impenetrable, impenetrable. Mm. That if someone tried to do a psychic attack like that, whether mm. it be you with an amulet or talking shit about you, mm. or, you know, saying stuff behind your back or like, you know, directly telling you that you're a loser or whatever just be what would jesus do you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. jesus would pray and be like i understand you're a hurt person mm. you know my energy is so clean and clear and mm. i'm so surrounded myself i'm gonna pray for you bro. you know like yeah so yeah that's that's the goal that's and i'm saying that's not that easy for some for most people right it's possible though it's possible so um so yeah so that's why, yeah, great. I'm excited to see it whenever you- Yeah, can. I should wear it next time. Next but, time. Um, so yeah, do you identify as a contemporary Babylon? I think is a question to ask everybody, ask themselves. And also too, like, because there have been so many Babylon that have been killed, who knows? We might, both of us might have a direct line to a Babylon, but the history has been- has, yes burned the scrolls have been burned the records have been have been destroyed the people that's have been killed. literally killed so that's where the sacred rage comes up because i'm like yeah that's foul that's so foul it like, is burning yeah. libraries yeah. it's crazy so um and that's where i think what comes through is like you know if you believe in reincarnation um that those spirits those souls that like perished they're like i'm gonna come back mm -hmm. <laughs> somehow <laughs> and i'm gonna lead you know two women from california and ohio to just talk about it yeah. you know yeah um are we are we contemporary by one maybe maybe I, i'm going to say i'll speak for me so yeah you go you speak for yourself go it's a maybe yes it's yeah maybe yes but you know, I'm, I'm still navigating the landscape. Yeah. I, I think for me, I'm going to say that I identify, I see myself as the archetype of the Bible. Even that feels bold. But I mean, what, what I mean by that is like, that's what I, that's what I aspire, that inspires me. So just like, you know, there's the queen archetype. I'm not actually a queen, you know, I don't have a lineage of a queen, but I'm a queen. Do you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I feel like I am ready to step dip my toe into saying I'm not a Babylon by lineage, just like I'm not a queen by lineage. I'm not a Babylon know. by lineage, but who but who knows? I might be, but I don't know, no, for sure. But I am I um, I am Babylon as an archetype, you know, and mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm, yeah. What other archetypes are there for us to identify? <laughs> right, as Filipinx <laughs> women, come on. Right, like, what else we got? Because, I mean, it's like, it's so colonized. Like, I literally, mm -hmm. when, you know, you look at our government, it's like, this is fucking white people shit this is literally how white people ran their own countries and they went to conquer yeah. same hierarchy shit you know yeah and it sounds like we were very evangelical we were very uh, welcoming we were very acknowledgeable of um you know multi-genders you know the story of the bamboo like mm -hmm. there was only malakas and malande there was no man or women um and it kind of makes sense sometimes when I look at some of my like family members, you know, friend groups, mm -hmm. they're Philippine X. So I'm like, it makes sense why we're very like gender neutral. Mm -hmm. and, and I love it. 
and um it's but it's just like we've been so colonized or like program to operate in this like duality like things are just like, yeah right or wrong yeah i was um i won't say where i was uh but uh we were talking about the language this tagalog language and how there pre-colonial there was no he or she right and this this gentleman was like, why? Why? What? Because like everybody was, you know, and said something transphobic or whatever. And I was like, no, like I had to speak up. I was like, no, I, because when we were colonized, that's when we were given pronouns. We we saw everybody as equal before that. And that's why everyone was just, yeah, it was they. Yeah. I had, and I like just the way he talked right. about it. And I'm like, what was his response? Nothing. He didn't say nothing. So, but I was like, let me learn you right quick. Okay. The, Bring out your, your like, verbal Cali sticks, girl. Right? And I'm like, how are you going to ask that? I'm like, literally, like, why are you talking? First of all, okay, sacred rage. Why are you honoring about yeah. my pre colonial history in front of my face with that sort of tone in your voice? How about you come with some curiosity? Oh, that's interesting. Why didn't the, instead of like this defensiveness, American, like patriarchal, um, dual, dualistic defensiveness, like, oh, why'd they do that? Well, <laughs> let me go ahead and tell you, but yeah. come at it with some curiosity. If you don't know, just come at it with some curiosity. That's all I'm asking, you know, anyway. I just channeled her duha right quick. You did. You did. <laughs> Made me think of my ex. He was been like, who you talking to? Like, who you think you talking to? <laughs> like, you know what? That's at this point, like, that's very valid. Cause it's like, imagine if you said that very calm and click, like, who are you, who do you think you're talking to? Like, Ooh, I'm a that, brown woman. That'd be scary. My lineage. Like, yeah. You need to check yourself. Like, so again he impenetrable yeah it's like a very I'm, nuanced channel and i'm yeah. trying to like stay in that frequency <laughs> well i was like to my to my i was surprised to my credit to my i actually said something because usually yeah, before i, I would too. i would be I know like it's challenging out there yeah. right? and my heart would be like beating and i'm like, oh my God. just so you're angry going to battle like, girl you're going to battle like what <laughs> what what you say <laughs> Yeah, but I was like, you know, let me just take a breath. Let me take a beat and just say <laughs> calmly say, well, actually, it's because it's it's they, they're not nobody's trying to offend you here. You know, Listen, I know you're programmed, but I'm about to like upgrade your system real quick because you got a virus. Like, right. Like just calm down. It's yeah. going to be OK. Things are me OK. And, and what can you do? They exist. People yeah. exist. Like, yeah. you're gonna be LGBTQQI. Like, it. They're just as a parent, and they just. They all. We all have rights to be here. The programs that you have are telling you that people don't. Right. Mm. Ask yourself oh, with your hand over your heart. Mm. Right. You talk to God and Jesus. Talk to God. And, and ask that yourself. Right. Yeah. And you say no, then they definitely need exorcism. <laughs> Thing. I'm gonna be like walk into this spray right quick. Right. Come here. I do this service. Like for your you. blessing spray, right? Quick. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, uh, it's like um okay, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna quote Sailor Moon. Sailor <laughs> Mars, she does like a she has like a prayer thing, it's like on paper. Yeah. It's like P Yon Sha, something you know, all the chanting the mantras, and then she yeah. throws she's like evil of spirit be exercised, she throws it on the 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 you know the character. Man. You know, I need to watch Sailor Moon. Yo, it's the live. Same for the record. On my mic right here. It is the Japanese version of The Simpsons. <laughs> Dang. Why? Because there's so many episodes or seasons. Is that why? That, the, there's like nuanced political, like just mm. so much you can talk mm -hmm. about. It's very rich mm -hmm. in things. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Maybe one, maybe one episode, sis. We'll watch it. We'll watch it. I was talking to I was talking to Chriselle um about it like 
Let's bring you, maybe when we can like bring her on. Cause so then it'll have her who has watched it, me, yeah. and then you who's like, wait, what? And then yeah. like, you have your perspective. So yeah, you gonna erase that from the record or bring it on? Bring it on. I'm saying it again, the mic. But something to think about. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be cool. No, this is where the content creator, engineer we're looking for. Shout out. Work for us. We can't, for we, can, we can't pay you yet. Yet. We will. Yet. Who wants to come? Who believes in this mission? Right quick. <laughs> no. Right. Because it'd be a job to market and post it. <laughs> right? <laughs> you got your job. I got my job. It's like, oh, this is really volunteer work. Yes. <laughs> But I love it. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Love it. It's it's Babai it's Babai Land work for the community. Okay. Yes. You know? And so we're looking for someone to bring us some rice and chickens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Okay. Right. We can barter that way. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So okay. All right. All right. I am complete with my quote unless you need to add, would feel like you want to add anything else? I think, I think for today, that was a great capture. This was a interesting one. Definitely recommend y'all to read it. Um, and question for you, if you do make it all the way, you're real MVP to this, comment mm -hmm. on our Instagram and let us know, do you think Princess Urduha was real? Do you think she was real? Also, would you consider yourself a contemporary Babylon? Do you feel comfortable in claiming, uh, representing that archetype? And Sinoka. Sinoka. Sinoyan. Yes. Sinoyan. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Hella tita. That's hella tita. Sinoyan. Sinoyan. Or they risk really like, Sinoyan. Is that, is that, is that, you know, uh, the unknown? <laughs> oh, love for the titas. I mean, love for the titas. I, I am it. a tita. I am a tita. You are. I want to be one. I am. You yeah. are. You're a tita. My you church. Are. Yeah. Yeah. Godmother. That's a tita, right? Yeah. Tita. Does anyone call you tita? Do you have people in your life who call you tita? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see them all the time though, but yeah. 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 I'm I am Tita Imes. That's Aww, my nickname. I'm so cute. It matches you. Tita Imes. With your Arduha shirt. I'm Tita Imes. <laughs> <laughs> I love our masculine voice, right? It's so like oh, I'm <laughs> Tita Imes. I don't know. Maybe we should edit this part out. Okay. <laughs> Or not. I or mean, not. You know, this is they real. Put on women and they be like, yeah, oh, we're so, uh -huh. we are. We're yeah. <laughs> and we're both. How about that? We're both and. Mm, both. Yeah. That's Sh what it is. Yeah. Don't colonize me. Okay. Yeah. We'll close this out with yes. this container. Yes. So as we end our conversation and close out this container, with gratitude, we again wanted to bring recognition and honor to our ancestors and the ancestors of this land. Um, thank you for joining our conversation today. As always, we're so grateful for your presence. We can feel it. Um, with a heart. As, yes, with a heart, Palo Santo heart. <laughs> and as we end, we leave you with a blessing. May the spirit of Urduha and what she represents inspire you. When you waver, may her strength and sovereignty steady you. When you feel disconnected, may her love for her community reside in your heart. And when people insist that your accomplishments are merely stories, may you know that you are the stuff of legends. When you are weary, may you know the divine is only a breath away. Mm -hmm. May Kapwa grow in your heart. And until we meet again, may you know that all is well and will be well, and that whatever happens, you are loved. <laughs>
Yay. Yay. That one was good. I felt it. Did you feel it? I felt it. Okay. <laughs> Yay.